Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about solving radical equations. So quickly walking through the steps, uh, your first step is to get the radical alone on one side of the equation. Step two is get rid of the radical using inverse operations. Step three is solve. And then step four, this is kind of the most important one. You have to check your answer. Now, your teachers always tell you, check your answer, plug it back in, see if it works. But this time, you truly have to check your answer because sometimes your answer is not actually going to be a real solution. So it's kind of unique, um, but you, you do have to do the checking step. So we'll show you how to do that. So the first step is get the radical alone on one side of the equation. So right now this is my radical and it's not alone because I've got this negative five hanging out over here. Um, so I'm gonna need to move that negative five over by adding it. Let's move it to the other side. So now I've got square root of two X plus one equals four plus five is nine. Now, some people say, well, can I go ahead and subtract one and move it over? We actually can't because this radical is kind of like a castle, okay? You can't leave the castle. Once you're underneath it, only way to get out of it is to use an inverse operation. We gotta get rid of this radical using the inverse. So I've gotta think what's the opposite of a square root? And the answer is a square. So if I square a square root, what happens is, is it totally gets rid of that radical and all I have left is what's underneath, okay? So if I had a cubed root here, I would cube it. If I had a fourth root here, I would take it to the power of four. So whatever is in that index, you in this case an understood to, you just bring it out here all right, and then that gets rid of the radical, okay? But here's the thing, if you're gonna do that to one side, you have to square the other side as well. Whatever you do to this side, you have to do to that side. So nine squared is nine times nine, which is 81, right? And now we'll subtract the one. Finally, we can move the one over now because we got rid of that castle, okay? So I've got 2x equals 81 minus 1 is 80. And last step is divide out the 2. And x equals 40. Now, we have to check that answer. Normally we say, oh great, we got it, circle it, keep moving. But we have to take this 40, we have to plug it back into the original equation and see if we get a true solution. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna rewrite the original equation over here. This is our check and I usually label it check. So you should too so your teacher knows that you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. So you've got negative five plus square root of two times x, but it's not x anymore. We're gonna call it 40 plus one and then we're gonna see, does this simplified, ooh, didn't mean to mark there, does this simplified equal four? So I'm gonna use my calculator instead of trying to do that by hand. So let's see, negative five plus square root of two times 40 plus one. Okay, and make sure that plus one is underneath the radical, underneath that little house and we do get four, okay? So I would ask myself, does four equal four? And obviously it does, so the answer does check, and x does equal 40. That is a true solution, okay? Let's try this one. All right, so first step is we've gotta get the radical alone. So it's not currently alone because it's got that minus six on the side with it. So I've gotta add six add six. So let's see, we've got square root of five X plus one equals zero plus six is six. All right, so now that the radical's alone, I wanna get rid of the radical using inverse operation. So notice this is a two, a little two in there. So I need to undo it by squaring it. 
All right, and all that I have left is just whatever was underneath gets free, gets to come out now. But if I square one side, you gotta do the other. So six squared is 36. So now we're just gonna solve. Get this one over, five x equals 36 minus one is 35. We wanna divide out the five and you get x equals seven. Okay, now before I confirm or, or circle that answer and keep moving, I have to take the time to check. Let's see if this really does work out. So square root of five times seven, because we're not gonna put x, we're gonna put seven now, plus one, make sure that's underneath the radical, minus six, and we're gonna see, does that equal zero? So let's bring this back out. Square root of five times seven plus one, and now I need to hit the right to come out of the radical, so the radical end with that one minus six. Let's see, does it equal zero? Sure does, okay? So zero does equal zero, it checks. So x equals seven, that is a true solution. Let's try this one down here. So my first question is get the radical alone, my first step, and you'll notice that my radical is already alone on this side, which is awesome. I can go ahead and go to the next step, which is get rid of the radical using inverse operation. So in this case, I'm gonna square it, okay? And when I do that, all I have left is underneath the radical. Equals, and if I'm gonna do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. Now negative three squared, negative three times negative three is positive nine. So that was really a one step problem. Let me plug it back in though and see if it checks. All right. So let's see, square root of negative nine and does that, or excuse me, I don't know where I, why I, wrote, I was looking at that negative three, my bad. Square root of nine equals negative three. Let's see if that's true. Square root of nine. And I get a positive three. So does positive three equal negative three? No, it does not equal. Those are two different things. So because that does not check out, I cannot circle x equals nine as an answer. It's not a real solution. So I just am going to put for now, I'm just going to put no solution. Okay, so I want you guys to try this one on your own. Um, square root of x plus 8 equals 3. So solve it, see if it checks. I'll put the answer in the description below the video. Let's look at a couple more examples. So when we are solving radical equations, remember that we want to have our radical alone on one side of the equation. So in this case, it's not alone. It's got both a two out front as well as a minus six. Um, so I need to get both of those over to the other side. First, I'm going to add six. And I get two times square root of x plus two equals 12 plus six is 18. All right, now it's still not alone because I've got this two being multiplied by the radical. So how do I undo multiplication? I divide. Okay, so at this point I've got x, square root of x plus two equals 18 divided by two is nine. Now once I finally have the radical alone, now I can do the inverse, which is to square it. That's gonna make that radical go away. Of course, if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. And so at this point, all I have left is what's left underneath the radical. Nine squared, so that's nine times nine, which is 81. I wanna subtract two from both sides, and I get x equals 81 minus two is 79. Now I do have to check that solution before I move any further. Um, before I, you know, officially circle that as my answer. So I'm going to do my little check over here. 
Okay, so I'm just going to plug in 79 4x in the original equation and see if I get a true statement. So we're going to do 2 times the square root of 79 plus 2 minus 6. And we're going to see, does that equal 12? And I'm going to bring out my calculator to save some time. So 2 times the square root of 79 plus Two. Got to hit the right arrow to get out of the square root now. Minus 6. So I should hopefully get 12. And I do. So because I get a true statement, 12 does equal 12, that means this answer is a real solution. Now over here you'll notice we've got a radical on both sides of the equation. Um, notice that they are both alone. So really all I want to do is square both sides to be able to get rid of that radical, both radicals. So I'm going to do it at the same time. Here all I have left is x minus 4. And over here all I have left is 3x plus 10. So I now want to get my x's together so that I can solve and figure out what x is. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep the x positive by subtracting this x. So I've got negative 4 equals 3x minus 1x is 2x. And then I'll bring down my plus 10. I want to move this 10 over here, so I'm going to subtract it. So now negative 4 minus 10, that's going to give me a negative 14 equals 2x. My last step to get x alone is divide out that 2. And I've got negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7 equals x. So before I confirm that that is my answer, before I box it, I need to double check it. So I'm going to plug it in to both sides and I'm going to see do these sides truly equal each other. Um, so for the first side I would say x which is negative 7 minus 4 does that equal the square root of 3 times negative 7 plus 10. Right? So I'm going to bring out my calculator and we'll try the first side. We'll try to get it reduced. A square root of negative 7 minus 4. Now something happens here. We get an error and it says error non-real answer. The reason why it's saying that is because we cannot have a negative underneath the square root. We can't take the square root of a negative number and we will get into that towards the end of the semester. Um, we'll talk about imaginary and complex numbers and, and what more we could do with this. But for now, if I get an error and it says non-real solution, if I try the other side, the same thing is going to happen. It's going to say error, non-real solution. That means I have no solution. So my answer would be no solution. So negative 7 is not a real solution to this equation. Let's look now. You'll notice these two last ones look really different. Um, we don't have a radical, but rather they've given us a fractional exponent. Um, but if you remember when we talked about fractional exponents, they are actually can be easily transferred over to radicals. So... A way that I could rewrite this, this is currently 3 times x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So I could rewrite that as 3 times the square root of x plus 1. And that goes back to, I have a whole video where we talk about fractional exponents and how the flower is the power, the root is the root. So this is to the power of 1 and the 2 goes in the root. I've got a whole video on that. So if, you, if you're if you confused by what I just did, you definitely want to review that video. Again, it's, it's called uh, fractional to radicals or, or something to that. At this point, I still have a 12 over here. Now, at this point, this problem looks just like this one. So I want to go ahead and proceed by getting the radical alone. In this case, I'm going to 
divide by three to get rid of that three on both sides. So I've got square root of x plus one equals 12 divided by three is four. My radical's now alone, so I can square it to get rid of it. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I've got x plus one equals four squared, so that's four times four, which is 16. Subtract one from both sides, and I get x equals 15. Let's confirm that that is a true answer solution by plugging it back in using our check. All right, uh, let's see. So three times 15 plus one to the one half power, does that equal 12? So now I'm gonna bring out my calculator to save some time. Three times 15 plus one to the one half power, so you can do a little fractional exponent, and you just do it like a fraction, um, and we're gonna see does that equal 12, and it does. So that confirms that x equals 15, that is a real solution. So let's look at this one. So this one was one half. This one is to the power of one third. The same rules apply. The flower is the power. The root is the root. So this time my root is a three, which means it's not a square root like it was over here. It's gonna be a cubed root. So I could rewrite this as cubed root of x minus two equals five. Now, how do I get rid of a cubed root? Because at this point, I've just been doing squares, right? Squares to get rid of the radical. But now I've got a cube here. So I just cube it. What's cool is you just take whatever number's in here. Um, so if this was a four, you would put it to the fourth power. If this was a five, you'd put it to the fifth power. Whatever that root is, that's what you're gonna be bringing it to the power of. And of course, Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So once I cube a cubed root, all I have left is what's underneath. They cancel each other out. Equals five cubed, which is actually, let's see, 125. So that's five times five times five. I wanna add two to both sides. X equals 125 plus two, that's gonna be 127. We do need to check our answer as always. So I'm gonna plug it back into the original equation. 127 minus two to the one third power, does that equal five? Let's find out. 127 minus two to the power of one third does it equal five? And it sure does. So that tells me this is a real solution. Five does equal five. So I can go ahead and box this as an official answer. All right, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.